Professor Dungeon Master here, and this video is sponsored by Mammoth Factory Minis. They reached out to me a couple months back and blew me away with the quality of their work. And now they're kickstarting the Horde of Gondol. Get rich or die trying. I've seen Kickstarter campaigns before, but this is a horde. Over 200 minis, a 300 page hardcover rulebook, eight adventures, 50 magic items, 50 battle maps and NPC cards, all with five E stat blocks. The art and layout are top notch. This is professional, but made by independent creators and non-AI artists. And the miniatures, they are fantastic. Look at this dragon. This is how D&D should be done. Plus, Mammoth has worked with me to develop a special pledge goal, the Deathbringer Mini. Yes, I get an armor upgrade. You do, and if Mammoth hits that stretch goal, it will unlock a Deathbringer SDL so you can play with Deathbringer at your own table. So check out Horde of Gondol at the link below. On with the show. Deathbringer here. Subscribe so you never miss an upload. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I apologize for the audio. If it seems a little off, that's because I am in Union Station at Gen Con. It doesn't have the best acoustics, and I'm working with a shotgun mic, but I'm taking a look at Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay starter set, and we're going to take a look at it live. I've not really opened it before. Special thanks to Steven Glicker of Roll for Combat because it's actually his set, and he lent it to me for this quick video. So this is the starter set. It is from Cubic. 7. It's a really sturdy box here, really nicely reinforced. This is a box that's going to last a while, and you don't have to worry about it getting crushed. And we have a couple of cool dice in here. Prepare to enter a grim world of perilous adventure. Read this first. All right, so, oh, this is kind of cool. It's a fold out. It tells you how to play and what's in the box. We have some fold out characters. This is Solyndra von Drakenberg, a human soldier. Gunnar Hralsson, a dwarf slayer with all their stats. So you can just pick up these characters and go. And D&D does something similar. And this is where I talk about you know, Wizards of the Coast. Y you look at their character sheets and look at these character sheets and there's it's so much higher quality and so much cooler. It's got the character's background, what is he like. These are how he responds to questions in a pinch. So it helps people role play. Really cool. So we have a wizard and a high elf merchant. So we got a, a dwarf, wizard, fighter, uh, witch hunter, group ties, secrets, initial wealth, what's her motivation. So we've got a mixture of stats which are clearly laid out. Those are your base characteristics in Warhammer character sheet. You kind of look down. Those are your basic skills. Those are your armor points on all your different areas. Nice looking sheet. And check out these illustrations on the back of the character sheets. Very cool. I'm just going to dump everything. There. All right. So what do we have here? A guide to Uppsreich. A map. So these are handouts. I guess you can cut these out. We have some tokens. I've already broken Steven Glicker's tokens. Attributes and skill reference sheet. If you don't know Warhammer, it is a an attribute system. Let me take a look at these character sheets again. I'll show you quickly how to play. You know, these are your characteristics. You got weapon skill, ballistic skill, strength, toughness, initiative, agility, dexterity, intelligence, willpower, and fellowship. And essentially these skills add to those things. And you, it's a percentile roll under system, so when you want to hit something, you roll under your weapon skill. Fortune are essentially luck points or inspiration. Fate is a get out of death free card, so this character can be killed twice before she's actually dead. Wounds are hit points. I've noticed some hit point creep in Warhammer as we're going on. It used to be only at 10 wounds, and now you got 15 wounds, so you got a little bit more than you used to have, but they're essentially hit points. It's a buffer. You don't really get hurt until you get reduced to zero wounds or less, that's when you roll on a critical hit chart. And you could break an arm or sever an artery or have a permanent scar. So this is the combat reference sheet initiative. Warhammer has a static initiative. So the highest initiative goes first. And I always recommend you sit the characters clockwise in order of initiative. That way you could just take your turns clockwise. Something I've recommended on this channel for other games. How to move, how to fight. In this game, when your character is winning, they get advantage, they get bonus on their next combat roll, essentially. 
different conditions, stunned, surprised, unconscious, fatigued, prone. The Adventure Book, A Grim World of Perilous Adventure. I love this art. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, Cubicle 7 really does great art. The Introduction, Rolling the Dice. Oh, I like that sidebar. Tricks, how to be a great DM. Simple tests, opposed tests. So opposed tests is when someone is testing against you. It's self-explanatory for anyone that's played a role-playing game before. Warhammer's all I call it Cthulhu. It's a percentile roll under system. It's mid-level crunch. It, it doesn't really get crunchy until you get to the critical wound part, but it's, it's not as crunchy as Roll Master, but you get a lot of gory results. All right, so this is us opening up scenario, and we have sidebars with NPCs and what happens. All right, so it looks like it's fairly linear, but we include some branching paths, I guess, in case you know players do something weird, which... Of course, we know they're going to do. Ah, there's a town in trouble, some nice illustrations. We got a river troll there and critical hits. Okay, so this is a teaching module. It teaches you, as you go through the module, how to play the game. And if you roll a double, an 11, 12, 33 on an opponent, whether in ranged or melee combat, you can cause a critical hit if the hit is successful and that can cause extra damage. Don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm always getting my editions of Warhammer mixed up. There's a place called the Murder Vault. That's awesome. Yeah, all right. So we're just flipping through. Grim decision. We want no part of this. The characters may take the well... Oh, this is great. Characters may well take the warnings to heart and decide for whatever reason they don't want to get involved. That has happened in my Warhammer games. If you make it too ominous, the players just want to leave. Always a problem in a horror game. Love these illustrations. What comes next? How to hand out experience points. We have additional... Adventures in Rubrus Reich. Ah, some goblins there. I love those goblins. They are nightmarish. And I guess Blood and Snow and Riddle of Silver, these are encounters that can be fleshed out into adventures. Very cool. You know, the funny thing about these little encounters like this, oftentimes the players will turn a few encounters into an adventure themselves. I love it when that happens. Okay. All right, so there we have the adventure rule book. Oh, we have the critical wound reference tables on the back. That's convenient. A guide to Uber's Reich. Okay, this is glue bound. It's pretty thick. Just going to leaf through it quick. Mmm, nice art there. All right, and we have, oh, this is the history of the Warhammer world. So these are the things that some game masters absolutely love and other game masters skip. But it's cool that it's here. So if you want to know how does the Carpenter's Guild work? You've got it at your fingertips. Really nice illustrations there. How the river runs, the Boatman's Guild. Through the Warhammer world runs the River Reich. It connects the major cities, so the players will spend a lot of time there. The Eel. Oh, I love this guy. Oh, I think I'm going to steal him. The Temple of Sigmar, Temple of Shalia, how it works. Okay, so it's a primer on the basics. There's a lot of information. Most of this is covered in the... Uh, in the book, but boy, they, they include a lot of stuff here. All right, these are uh, pretty slick, these pages. Really high quality. They're not going to tear easily. Oh, we got some common monsters like the Skaven, a doppelganger, uh, Uber's Reich, Widow's Veil, a Schaffenberg, Black Rock. And we have some nice handouts here. Very cool. And that is what you get with the Warhammer basic set. I gotta say, for the 30 bucks you pay for this, you get a lot of material, more than other companies' basic set, I'll tell you that. I played Warhammer for many years. This is a very enjoyable game if you like a grim, dark fantasy game. It's a little more realistic with a little bit of crunch. So, big thumbs up for me. This is the way a starter set should be done. Congratulations, Cubicle 7, and it's available at the link below. If you're interested in supporting my work on Patreon, that link is below as well. In addition, you'll find links to my game, Deathbringer. Again, thanks to Steven Glicker at Roll for Combat for letting me root through his game. I'll see you next time. May all your rolls be 20s. Deathbringer again. From page 175. Your head is severed from your neck and soars through the air, landing D10 feet in a random direction. Ah, the Warhammer critical hit tables. Or as I call them, lullabies. Click on these videos for more Dungeon Craft.